Hey guys, welcome to your fifth AS3 game development tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at mathematics in ActionScript 3. So uh, we're basically just going to, you know, take variables and add them together and learn how to do some simple stuff. For the most part, we're going to just be using uh, simple math, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division that won't require any crazy functions or anything, but eventually we will take a little look at that. Okay, so right now we've got all this code, and there's a bunch of comments here, a bunch of comments here. So let's let's uh, just get going. So what I think we'll do is uh, comment comment all this. Uh, let's let's just get rid of it all. Poof. Okay. Um, we'll get rid of updates. <clears throat> And we will have nothing. Okay, so uh, so last time we were doing a lot of private vars, so that just means it's a variable that's private to the main class. Um, so let's do I don't know private var. Uh, let's call it num1, which is an int, which is equal to zero. Private var num2, which is an int, which is equal to three. And let's actually change this to uh, not 1.5, but 1. And then do private var num3, which is a number which is equal to 1.5. And we'll see how all of these act. So, first we're going to do trace num1 plus num2. Okay? That should be really simple. We're adding the two of them together. And I accidentally pressed F6. Um... Yeah, so if we look down here, 1 plus 3 is 4. Cool. Um, we're going to write a function quick that will allow us to uh, display the numbers and do some better stuff with them. So actually, num1, num2, let's, let's just do this. OK, uh, I was going to write something that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so we have. Uh, this trace function that we've been using to get stuff logged down here in the output log. And you can actually put commas in here and put multiple things. So we're going to log number 1, number 2, and then num1 plus number 2. So you can see 1, 3, 4. And uh, you could also do um, plus, uh, either with single quotes or double quotes. <clears throat> and then I would do that, and then you could also do the equals and make it all pretty <clears throat> so let's let's do that okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to copy each line also there's a control d shortcut that duplicates lines so if you're programming in action script three i mean <laughs> action script three, if you, well yeah if you're programming it but if you're using flash develop absolutely use it it's super fantastic uh keyboard shortcut um i use it all the time so now we're going to do uh, num1 times num2 equals num1 times num2. And as you see, it's equal to 3. So now we're going to do something interesting. We're going to multiply um, an integer by a number. And since they're different variable types, uh, action script has to decide what it's going to output. And in this case, if you multiply um, an integer by a number, you get a number. Uh, with with uh, certain languages, this isn't always the case. Like if, if uh, instead we just plugged in 1.5 here, um, in this language, it's still going to come out as a number, but in other languages, um, it won't. <clears throat> and we can do an example of this. Um, do var uh, product, uh, which is an int, which is equal to num1 times num3, which should be 1.5. But if we trace product, since it's an int, it chops off the decimal point, and we're left with 1. Now, it gets even more interesting if we do something like uh, negative 1 times uh num3. So now it's negative 1 times 1.5, which is negative 
So is it going to round down to negative 2 or is it going to round up then? It rounds up because it literally just chops off the decimal point. So decimal point, bye. It just completely disappears. It doesn't matter if it's point 1, point 0.9, point 0, 0, 0, 0.001. Um, yeah. It, whatever. Decimal point goes away. Uh, so we've already got through a bunch of the simple stuff. Uh, there's also subtraction, which we'll check out. Oops, and division. So we will do that, and then we will divide. <clears throat> and this should act pretty similar. So um, even if you divide to uh, integers in ActionScript 3, you still get a number. Um, however, if you were to save that to an integer, it would just be zero. Uh, and then this also turns into that. So when you're working with your games, if you're ever expecting a decimal and you're not getting it back, you might be saving it to an integer value, which is the whole reason you're having a problem. So super easy fix. You just have to change that to a number. And then, yeah, super, super easy. OK, so let's, let's get rid of all that. And let's check out this class that ActionScript 3 has in it by default called Math. And what you can do is you type Math, and it pops up, and it's like, wow, final class, Math. Um, if you press the period or the dot, um, you get all these different functions that you can call. Um, there's probably close to 20 on here. And they also have stuff built in like, like E, um, natural log of 10, natural log of 2, log of 10E, log of uh, 2e pi, uh, and the square root of 1 half, and the square root of 2. So these are all numbers that are that are predefined, and they're defined to quite a few decimal places. Um, I think it only goes to where it goes, but it might go on and on. I, I don't think so, though. Um, computers uh, typically only go to so many decimal places when you're programming um, in languages. Uh, by default, just because uh, of the way that the bytes in the computer save the numbers. Uh, if you ever go into computer science, you can learn more about that. Uh, typically, if you have a floating point value, it's called, which would be a decimal, or in ActionScript, it would be number. Uh, if you have it to over six decimal places, you're probably going to get a bit of inaccuracy. It's only really accurate to six decimal places, so that's just something to keep in mind. <clears throat> If you're doing something that exact, uh, you're doing something pretty crazy, and uh, hopefully you look into an alternative other than number. Uh, you'd probably have to code your own thing, but it's it's not a biggie. Um, so let's continue on. Uh, let's do uh, math. So we're going to create uh, change num1 to negative 1, and I'm sure you guys will be able to figure out what this does if you've ever worked with absolute values, it um, makes a number positive. Um, it figures out the distance from 0 it is. So if it's negative 10, it's 10 from 0. If it's positive 10, it's 10 from 0. Uh, the absolute value. Um, so yeah, there's there's that. Math. Uh, there's uh, the trigon trigonometric functions, which are super useful, especially in uh, games. A seal uh, is short for ceiling. It's a rounding function, so it always rounds up. There's also floor, which rounds down, and then if you want a normal round, there is a round. Let's let's continue. In, let's see. Uh, I guess we'll go over some of the less common ones because all the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. So max here is pretty cool. Um, so if you put in, let's do num1, num2, and num3. And then we're going to duplicate uh, control D and plug in min, it'll do the opposite. So what happens is max takes in as many values as you want. You can put log in as many arguments into this max function, okay? Like we could, we could plug in a billion. Probably not. It would flash would be very mad at us. It, would, it might crash. But um, you could plug in a ton of numbers into this. And what it does is it finds the biggest number out of all of them. Min does the opposite. It finds the smallest number out of all of them. So max uh, is going to return number two because it's the biggest. And then this one returns number one because it's the smallest, uh, which is super useful. 
<clears throat> um, the other one that we'll check out before we end this video is random. So random, uh, you don't plug anything in, and what random does is it um, returns a number between 0 and 1, a uh, decimal number. So you can get any number between there. And what you typically want to do is if, uh, let's, let's, uh, Let's just do a bunch of them quick. So we'll do we'll do a bunch. Um, so you'll see that you get all these random numbers, and if you wanted to get like actual numbers, like let's say that you wanted to get, there you're flipping a coin, and it can either be zero for um, for he <clears throat> heads and one for tails. Uh, what you do is you could do multiply by two. Okay. And this will help you out, kind of, because then you get 0 and 1, but what you'd want to do from there is do math.floor. And then I'll delete that, and um, we will delete these just so we can see the random ones for now. And you'll see that it's 0 and 1. If you wanted to return 1 or 2, you do seal. And now you're only going to get 1s and 2s. And it's random. This this that was a pretty rare occurrence. But if we run it a couple times, we'll see that it it actually is random. Um, it doesn't really preference one over the other, even though sometimes it seems to did. Like the first time that we ran it, we got five twos. Um, but if if we do a bunch of these, we'll see that it's it is truly random. Yeah, like there's no pattern here. Uh, it. That's one of the cool things. Uh, we can look into the random function later on when we start programming games. Uh, a lot of games use random for a multitude of things if you're programming an RPG. Uh, with turn-based battle, you use random to calculate uh, the attack. Uh, it would be a lot more than just calculating it based off of random. There's a huge formula that typically goes on that. Um, when you're trying to get random enemies uh, for one of those battles, um, there's all sorts of stuff. Uh, random timers, so like when enemies attack, you might say, um, like, uh, uh, attack delay, which is a number, can be equal to, um, it needs to be at least two seconds, but it can be up to one point, or up to 3.5, which would be an extra 1.5, so, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with random. Random's a super, super useful thing, and thankfully, flash. Action Script 3 has it built in, so you don't ever have to worry about uh, having to program that yourself because it's a uh, it's a bit of a down downfall if you have to program. I don't know any programming languages that you have to program it yourself, but I know people that have done it before, and it's not too bad. But it's always nice having it built in. So yeah, uh, that was the mathematics tutorial, and next time it looks like we'll be looking at arrays. So that'll be tons of fun. We are now halfway done with the first series, I, I guess. Um, I don't know if I'm going to call them series, but basically every 10 tutorials we're going to kind of shift gears. The first 10 are introduction to AS3. Uh, the second 10 are uh, learning Flashpunk and creating some simple stuff with that. So we will be getting into games in... Uh, six tutorials which is pretty soon so it's tutorial 11. Uh, so yeah I hope you enjoyed this uh, we're gonna try publishing them more often now <laughs> I know we've said that in the past but like it's always hey we're gonna do it and then oh hey now that we've decided to do this the universe decided to throw us a curveball and we don't have any time so we're, we will be doing it from now on uh, we're still trying to figure out our Schedule, um, we're thinking Tuesday, th Thursdays um, for the rest of February, and then changing back to what we wanted to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, yeah, um, we'll be doing this more often, and we just hope you enjoyed this, and you check in from time to time. This is Brett Hudson, and I will catch you next time.